Hey everybody, this is Stephen Totillo, Editor-in-Chief of Kotaku, and I am with... Paul Tamayo. Video producer of Kotaku. <laughs> yeah, video producer of <laughs> Kotaku. But uh, we are we're going to take you guys back. Way back. 10 million years into the past. Back show you a, a game that I think is really cool, but also really hard to get into, um, called Ancestors Humankind Odyssey. It's out August 27th, which is a Tuesday. I'm going to let you look at some of the intro, and we'll pick back up and start talking about some of what's ha happening in the game. You name you may notice there is uh, Patrice Desolet. He is the the person who really cooked up the main concepts for Assassin's Creed. He's creative director for that franchise. He started it up. Prince of Persia's Hands of Time was his brainchild before that. So he's been out of the game for about 10 years because of various games industry politics. Um, but he's back. Ooh. It's his first game in about a decade. He's got a team in Montreal. We're not going to be streaming for for hours uh, or, or rec <laughs> recording video, whatever we're doing here. Or for millions of years. <laughs> no. no. We can't do that. The truest thing oh in the game God. right there. True words. <laughs> they do not said. help you, right? So, Paul, you've been playing this a bit too, and right, it's, uh, it takes a bit to figure out, huh? Yeah, <laughs> it uh, it kind of fights you for a bit. Yeah, and I don't know how much of that is. Hey, evolution was hard, so this is game <laughs> is just trying to convey that, versus like sometimes game designers make their games harder than they realize because they're so used to them as they design them and play them in development that they don't don't realize that what the common person is going to experience. But we have a, 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 a pre-recorded setup that plays the same. You can play in either a scripted, I guess very lightly scripted, um, progression. I say lightly because you really are figuring out most of it yourself. But there's like a start, a specific starting point that you'll see in a little bit. Or you can play in more of an open-ended thing where you set the size of the, the clan that you want to be able to sort of uh, control of prehistoric people. Um, a little amount of tutorializing it's going to do. Uh, amazingly enough, we're doing the one with the max tutorializing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very much. Believe it or not. But you're seeing the that somewhere in Africa, 10 million years ago, where this game is set, you know, wildlife is running wild, and we're we're going to come into the come into play here in control of not just one, but any one of a clan of prehistoric people. And the idea, and I don't know exactly which species it is, because um, it's obviously much closer to just ape, and right, and and then sort of going through primate evolution. The game goes up to two million years ago. It does not even get up to the invention of fire, from what uh, Desolate told me when I talked to him at E3. Oh, wow! But you know, you'll you'll see how primitive it is. There's no walking upright right at the start. There's no tools, that kind of stuff. Um, and really, like it, like it warns, and like Paul's also acknowledged, there is not a lot of yeah. help given. It, it's interesting seeing this cutscene for the second time now, how much they tell you up front, like, uh, like how much of the world you'll be able to actually interact with and mm -hmm. explore. And like you're seeing right now, how much you can actually climb and traverse. And how crucial it is to have the babies with you. Right. I don't know if you picked up exactly how the system that they have for that. And I'm, I'm, I'm in, I played actually, this game for about... I would say 10 hours now. Paul, you played it for an hour or two? I would say like two, yeah, two to three hours. Yeah. And I've had several breakthroughs. One thing I would say, oh, some drama happening right oh. here. It's kind of sad. Yeah. It's hard out in these streets. <laughs> okay. Rip. So it always will begin that way, and then, okay, Dual analog control scheme. They recommend you play on the controller. One of the things that Patrice Desolet was real proud of when he first was putting out Assassin's Creed is that they had a control scheme that was different than the norm and really uh, used the controller buttons as you know, a metaphor for various things. So in this case, you may have seen from that 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 pop up that I probably shouldn't have just delete, uh, had go away, but that the Y button, which is the topmost face button, is intelligence. So think of it as the mind the X button or the senses, and if I click that, I can either hear, and this is kind of showing us a thing of scanning for audio signals, or smelling, and so now I'm looking for odors or trying to sniff out odors. There's n neither of which are discernible right now, which is why you're not getting anything. Mm -hmm. And then with A being stand up, which is the bottom of face button, this idea here is 
even think about the, the way those buttons would match to the physiology of a person, the bottom most button is the standing up, it's the legs, right? Mm -hmm. The top most button, intelligence, that's the mind. And here we are in intelligence mode, which is a scanning mode. And okay, what's that over there? So let's focus on that and see, it's a hiding spot. Okay, can press, hold the button again, and I can remember it. Well, I didn't find the controls intuitive at all. And no. It took me a while to get to get a grip on them. Same? Yeah, same. I mean, it, it's, it definitely has its roots in that sort of Assassin's Creed style of, like, you hold A to do pretty much everything and, and move forward and let go. The let, letting go to jump actually felt really good. It feels pretty good. Um, but, yeah, it, it takes a while to get used to the rhythm of switching senses and, and focusing on things and remembering remembering to remember the thing that you're focusing right. on. Right. This is a, we, I can walk, I can climb, I can hop, I can do a bunch of things that make moving around in this jungle pretty uh, pretty fun. Uh, right now though, the reason it looks kind of so scary is because, and disturbing, and what are all these like weird, like growly faces? It's because it's trying to convey the idea that this baby primate is afraid. And babies, in general, when you play as them, can't go outside of the main base camp without immediately becoming afraid. The good thing about them is that they're invincible. So I don't know if it's a possible way to have a full game over, a full extinction of the species. In this case, they're demonstrating the fact that we can go move control from one member of the clan to another. So now we're playing as an adult. Mm -hmm. There are babies, there are adults, and there are elders. And in fact, if I... Uh, the controls can be a little bit in terms of highlighting, okay? We can analyze and we can see that I'm looking at an elder named Two or Toe, uh, who's an elder male, he's single, um, and the green dot is an indication of like kind of a health meter. Mm -hmm. Also, if uh, you look on the bottom right, that is not a mini-map, which I initially thought it was. Oh. Have you sorted out how to use that thing yet? Not at all. <laughs> okay, right. <laughs> oh, by the way, folks, I'm going to try to not explain everything, right, but right. I'm explaining some stuff to just give people a sense of how the game works. If you are intrigued, I recommend enough that you think, hey, I want to play this game, then I recommend you just do so and you get it. It comes right. out on Epic Game Store on uh, PC on Tuesday, the, tw the 27th for 40 bucks. It's coming to console, Xbox One, and PS4 in December, and I think Steam next year. I don't think they're going to do a Switch version. Um, it'd be cool if they did. Really cool. So, but the game is not telling you anything, and I initially was somewhat frustrated by that, but eventually was having a really good time making the discoveries myself, and I wouldn't want to rob people of that experience. Right, right. I do want to explain some basics, because I think some people will have trouble, and I'm not going to leave you guys mystified as to what that thing on the bottom right is. So that is actually showing an indication of the clan that you are a part of. Uh, the orange dots are children, and if uh, every all the dots are inside the circle, the outer circle, that means they're in the, the base camp. So the fact is we know that there's one kid who's outside the base camp. We can actually hear him screeching, and so that's you see that indicated with the orange dot out there. Top two dots, the little ones, are elders. Uh, they have their own properties as well. Elders never get afraid no matter where they go. Um, adults get afraid until they can then conquer their fear, and that's a way of yeah. expanding the map. The adults are the three white dots on the left. Um, you'll see some other things change with that uh, thing in a bit. So if we go to our senses, which are is the X button, and we switch, we have hearing. I think. Well, I guess I can't hear very far. So let me do this. Hopefully, I don't break a leg. Nice. Not, um, this was kind of risky. Yeah, I thought we would get a sound indicator here, but we're not. But regardless, we know that this is where the kid is. There's a lot of things in this game that are actually kind of a rhythm game, or so you, you want to kind of pay attention. Yeah, I love that call and response thing. Yeah, so that was me waiting for the baby to respond. You got this far, right, Paul? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> I got pretty far. I I, I killed a couple of uh, of the the you know. The family, I felt bad about uh, it. I was going to say you killed the tigers. They're hard to do. That's oh, hard to do. no, 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 no. Okay, so what do we have going on now? We have we're carrying a baby, and we've grown a neuron. And you'll see a skill tree. I'll show you guys that in a bit. But let's observe a couple more things. That baby is now on my back. So you actually can see a small uh, line connecting the baby, uh, you know, sort of into that inner circle. So that's an indicator of anybody in the clan who's kind of with you in some way. So you can go out into the jungle solo, but you can also go out to the jungle with other primates. And sometimes there's strength in numbers in terms of intimidating a predator. You can try to intimidate the predator on your own. 
stand up or wave your arms, whatever, scream. And it, it, they say it's more effective if you do it with a group. So you can go out with everybody, but then they're all at risk if you get attacked. Wait, so did the game tell you that about the lower right-hand meter thing, or did you just deduce well, that? Well, there is, there is, I mean, there is this help menu that will tell you huh. a few things. So, like, there's a thing in here about uh, clan, and they explain... Ah. Slightly allude to it, but even here they're saying dots with a link represent those who are following you, which I just said, but they don't specify that it's adults, which are the dots on the left, and the elders with the small dots on the upper right. So some of it, you know, I figured out. Mm. By the way, notice here they're talking about some of the different traits. So elders, when they explore alone, never have fear, and that's useful, and I don't even know if we'll have time to show that, but that's a good thing. Notice that, like, pregnant female. So you're procreating, you're trying to advance the species in various you know, in various ways through both small 15 year steps of having kids but then evolutionary leaps and we'll show be able to show some of that i think but um even the status of just if you're playing as a female primate who's pregnant then there's other traits that come into play here you actually can be more intimidating have greater stamina and stuff like that so cool um the reason that you want to have the baby on your back and this is not um initially explained but you sort of figure this out is that the name of the, 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 the essence of this game is about expanding a skill tree um, that is eventually going to enable this ape to have the intelligence and the senses and the dexterity of a homo sapien. And so every little action that you do is potentially going to help you earn the kind of brain improving experience points that are in this game. They call them neuro neuronal points, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and you, but you only gain them if you're holding a baby. So the babies can't do things, but the babies are witnessing. So here we go, we've picked up a strange plant. You see there's this black smoke or whatever. I'm holding down a button to sort of think about what it is, and then I discover what it is. It's a Natal grass kaikad, um, and I've gotten a, probably a little bit more experience points. That inner gray circle is beginning to fill. I've developed another neuron in the process, and I'm now holding this plant. What can I do with this plant, though? Um, there is stuff you can do with it, but I I'm not getting a it out. I'm not getting a prompt to eat it, so it's not food. I'm just gonna drop it, um, and we're gonna we're gonna go along and, and maybe do some other things. So let's look around a little bit. Um, so at this point, it doesn't make sense to bring them back to the camp. You you still want to kind of go out and explore with them. Well, the game is asking us to bring them back, so mm. you could we could do that. Uh, and there's a balance to whether or not it's good to go back right away or, you know, for now I want to show, like, some basics before we completely head back. So I've scanned this thing up here. There's something mysterious. I don't know what it is, so I'll go over there. Controls for climbing I find real easy. Yeah, like, yeah, Did yeah. you find that getting around was work for you? Yeah, absolutely. I always, I, I always miss my uh, swinging opportunities, though, so a lot of broken legs for me. Huh. But this helps for some things, too. So this is a Kapok fiber. Um, notice we have a, a an option here to apply. So let's hold down the A button and see what happens. Do you know what this does, mm -hmm. Paul? Yeah. Okay. I've had to use it a lot. <laughs> so if we apply this, see what happens. Okay. We've been given uh, ex actually a buff, and it is a buff. It seems to be against bleeding. So there are food. There's food out there. Um, and other stuff that we can get that is then going to, in some ways, help us out. Um, help us out of a problem or create a buff to do it. Now, note this. This time I, I didn't get a question mark when I scanned the Kapok fiber. I know what a Kapok fiber is. So anytime I look around now and I see a mysterious square, huh. but it is a thing that I already have held in my hand and ex examined, then I'm just being told, yep, yeah, that's a Kapok fiber. Meanwhile, on the right, that very tiny, you know, white dot is beginning to get bigger in, in the middle, and that means that I'm gaining capo, uh, capo, neural, neural energy. And I thought, oh man, this game is going to all be about standing everywhere and scanning, and it's going to be boring. Not quite, but initially, initially to get the first little boosts of this energy, this is this is a thing worth doing. Now I'm hoping to spot something that I don't know what it is because then I would have reason to go and explore. explore. Yeah, so this just is. this just blew my mind. <laughs> Much like the, the little tiny... I'm smelling, by the way, now. I'm going to see if I can pick up an odor. The little here. tiny baby ape that's with you. Uh, I didn't know that. I, I've, I'd only been using that to heal myself when I, whenever I was hurt. So I never really got the buff 
that would then unlock that square that originally yeah. would have a question mark. So this is actually really helpful for me. <laughs> hey, look, we have another con contextual oh, yeah. command here, Paul. What should we do? You, you know about this, right? Oh, yeah. You, you got to know about this. Yeah, so this this will give you a chance to well, well, first I'm holding some water. It. So yeah. everything is mysterious at first. Right. So we're playing as a as a as an ape who is, doesn't understand anything, right? right? So let's inspect. Whoa, that's not the inspection I was talking about. <laughs> okay, surprise, yeah, extra yeah. inspection. All right, there. All right yeah. TSA, whatever. <laughs> no, but we we discovered his fresh water source. Right, right. Um, and now, what happens when we try to scoop? Oh, look at this. Yeah. Drinking water. Drink it up. Okay, let's time to explain the middle, the the circle at the bottom. Paul, you want to take that? That's your energy, right? <laughs> I knew, I knew. Yes, yeah, this game explains nothing. They actually, if you pause, you can learn some of it. But, um, so the circle is yes, it's your health basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when you start to get red around it, a red ring, red ring of death. Um, <laughs> Rip. Yeah, your Xbox is screwed, but also <laughs> it, your life expectancy has shortened. Mm, if that oh. thing was entirely red and the circle was small, you'd be dead. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So th they tell you that there are things that. Wait, where is that thing that I smelled? Wait, so that red line, the smaller your cir the green circle gets, it, there's no way to make that. Once it kind of goes you away, can, there are things you can do. I haven't figured out how much, which things are permanent mm. in terms of the, the effects on the health the, circle. Yeah, where it can never get bigger again. So I'm trying to memorize, right? There you okay. Go. So it's a triangle. I think I got memorized. So this is something that I've detected not through vision. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Oh, right there, oh. snake. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so we probably don't want to go down there. No. Uh oh. That's an tall grass. It, might, it might have seen you. It's coming your way. Oh, yeah. No, I can't even see it. Okay. It's coming your way. All right, well, we're going around it. Okay. Let's see. But you hear the music change. I'm just trying to be. I'm trying to be. Watch your back. Oh, let's try to intimidate. Keep your head on a swivel. Oh, that's my favorite button. Did I scare the, the green no, mamba away? I don't think so, because you're still kind of freaking out of it. Well, I'm grabbing the... Oh, right, so, so Paul's paying attention to that it's like the fear beater on the left. Yeah. But I can't help myself. Oh, no, I oh, intimidated. I intimidated the snake. The green mamba. So I've picked off this plant. I'm going to inspect this plant. We're going to have the same thing, black smoke around it. What is this? It's cot. Okay, let's eat some cot. Oh, look... You know about this, Paul? No. See, I got some more buffs here. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, these I've done before. Anti-broken yeah. bones buff and anti-cold buff. Right. And I'm maturing more neurons. So now, uh, it's the thing I haven't fully understood is that I can sniff out this particular plant, the cot, but I don't seem to be able to see it. And I could be missing something, but, like, okay, in my vision I do see that one, but, like, I don't see that as a thing I can I can recognize, and I don't really understand that because... I can smell it, but for whatever reason, I don't have visual recognition of it. So if I go into my huh. senses, I guess because it's discovered, I see it, but I wasn't seeing it as a potential thing. I, right. I, maybe I'm slightly misunderstanding how that feature works, but I can still see other things. And by the way, remember that little white dot in the center there? That's getting bigger now. So I have clearly been, um, all the way on the bottom right, that I'm clearly building up some neur neuronal energy I don't. It's. I don't think it's neural, by the way. I, I like that's the <laughs> word I keep wanting to say, but that's not the word that they've it said to me. It sounds right. So we'll see. You notice there's a timer on this, everybody. It's 4:30 in the afternoon, um, which is almost the time we were recording this yeah. as well. So that's kind of a, kind of great. Weird. And this is ultimately a survival game as much as it is anything else. And so you're playing on a day-night cycle, having to worry about hunger, thirst, fatigue. Um, is that so? I, That's I a special plant right there. I never made the connection, or at least bothered to read the tutorial menus. That uh, having the baby on your back. Oh 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 oh! I screwed Ooh, it up. Oh, see? but at least I got yeah. the tree swing. There you go. I wanted to get that that thing. Okay, so that's just stupid. I, I'll just I'll just leave. I'll just go back up here. So notice my life expectancy has gone down more, and it could be I'm just not taking care of myself well. I'm not resting. Um, here now I've rested. Anytime you see yellow in there, I think it means you're getting, you're doing a th the thing that will help you kind of uh, recover, right? Right. Another mysterious plant. Horsetail. Have you had any horsetail in the game yet? Paul? I have, yeah. I thought you were going to ask me in real life. I haven't in real life. Maybe one day. I keep waiting for the baby to take the... Yeah. Oh, I, I guess if you hold down the A button, he goes for, she goes for another, um, goes for another plant. 
another piece of horsetail. I you thought having to feed the baby was going to be a thing, but it doesn't seem like that's the case. It seems like the baby just sort of is... Feeds through observation? Yeah, and, and it is immune to attacks once you, you know, if you happen to lose control of uh, the creature that you're currently... Yeah. You notice I'm getting tired, by the way, as I walk up. So yellow in that meter is a sign of fatigue. So there's an incentive to rest. I think if you, like, burn out all the green energy and you're just in the yellow, I think that's when you start grinding down the red more. Mm -hmm. Um and I don't know if you get all the red back or not. Well, we'll see. So we've, we've burned a lot of energy here, but it comes back a lot. We have not fully brought our energy back, but it's come back a lot. You don't age through the course of like multiple game days. Like I'm locked as an adult. This baby's locked as a baby. But we've done the, one of the few scripted things, and I have not even covered, I've not experienced that many scripted uh, events in the hours that I've played. But this is an initial, initial one because they want, I guess, to inf emphasize this idea of this, the f different generations in the family and all that. It's adorable. So we got a uh, clan building themselves up. Elders, adults. Is this kind of a sad moment just happened now? Are they happy? Are they arguing? What's happening? Oh, they're mourning. They're mourning the elder who oh, died. That's, that's it. Who got sad. got hit in the head by the bird? Me, callous and unfeeling. Um, can your lineage evolve faster than our ancestors did? So this is a core thing they talk about in the, in the game, and then it's part of the, the marketing as well. Patrice Desley keeps using this line: "Hey, Homo sapien, can you do better than you? Can you survive what your ancestors did?" Um, okay, here they explain some of the energy stuff here, but I'm gonna go over to a resting spot. Oh, I'm still eating a plant. Let me drop this plant. Okay. Have you stockpiled anything yet? Uh, yes. I did okay. that a little bit because I found that there was a few things that if I s put them in a pile, it then gave me a prompt to do something with the pile. Oh, interesting. I don't want to give, give too much away. Okay. Uh, you you, you, you might have just... Neuronal energy. There we go. Giving me some neuronal energy myself. Ah, yes. There you go. Well... I, viewers can't see this, but Paul is riding on my back That's right true. now. That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which, we're like really method right now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So sleep spot. We're going to lie down. Even that, I've discovered a sleep spot. That's a little weird, but okay, whatever. So evolution. Yeah. Okay. So here we are in the neuronal network progression. So they, the designers say they've talked to scientists, they've tried to develop a sense of kind of what evolutionary progression was over 10 to million, 10 million years ago to 2 million years ago. They're acknowledging that they've video gamed it, but that there's some essence of, of that. So um, we have this thing can be a skill tree and you'll see nodes begin to fill out. It can actually be a little hard at first to see where the cursor even is. Um, we were getting prompts as I was playing that we had kind of activated certain neurons and it's showing that they, we basically made them eligible for upgrades. So here now, we've gained the ability to switch an item from uh, one hand to the other, which is useful. Motor skill. Yes. And there now there are some new potential abilities being created. Now, we cannot use them yet. We can't even fill the neural neuronal XP to get them because this game wants us to now do other things with motor skills to kind of prime these for upgrading. So right now, and that might be why I should have just gone back to base camp now that I think about it, without doing anything else. Because I have this XP that I can't spend on anything because none of these other neurons have been set up. But in short order, they'll be able to. So we'll go out of this in a moment. I can show you though that eventually, or really as long as you have um, babies in your family, you can try to advance a generation, move ahead 15 years, your elders will die. Wow. Your adults will become elders, your babies become adults and you're progressing along. What is the point of that? In part to replenish, because if people are dying, this is, you want to eventually have a lot of adults. So if your adults have died, have a lot of babies with the few that are, you know, adults that are, you know, still <laughs> sort of around. <laughs> um, and then these babies can grow. They don't get too caught up in like, uh, you know, same families, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, sleeping with each other. I don't know how primates handled things back in the day, but um, they don't, you know, they sort of, are, are playing Gloss a little fast and loose with that. Yeah. Eventually, you would be able to evolve, and the way that you can evolve is to, um, well, it says, you have to be in your settlement, you have to have gone through at least one generation, so we would have to have gone through at least one family generation. We'll see if we have time to do that, and then we can um, 
it, these achievements that we have here, which are basically things like, have you found things fast enough? Have you discovered things? Have you scared off animals? Are, th are going to then be used as a way to check, are you doing things faster than science would have said that you would have done it? So now we're free to do anything that we want to do. I actually want to see if there's some uh, option over here to do something. But what I'm hoping to be able to do is show people some of the upgrades and um, maybe even, if we're lucky, a little bit of evolution. So we'll see. Might even have to do a little bit of time-lapse photography here to... Oh yeah, that off. This has been actually extremely helpful just for me. Um, who you know, I've only poured a couple of hours into this game so far, but the way the game sort of doesn't hold your hand at all um, is something that I was like struggling with for a while. Even though I kind of like those games right. generally, um, but I found personally like just even just moving around um, occasionally, I'll get stuck on stuff or whatever. So it definitely has. It is a tiny bit rough around the edges, but having now seen how a lot of the systems work and, and things that I forgot about, honestly, is really, really helpful. It makes me actually want to pour more time into this. Yeah. Have you done this? Have you pulled off dead branches I yet? I have, yeah. Okay. I haven't figured out what to do with them All yet, right. though. So, remember I got the ability to move things from one hand to the other? So I'm doing that. Oh, look at you now, go. Now, look what has happened by being able to move things from one hand to another. What they're implying is that you have then also figured oh. out the ability to wield things okay two hands this changes so everything now i've learned how to strip off a branch i still haven't looked at what this thing is so it's still covered in black smoke so maybe i or, or actually the other thing did not have black smoke on it so this thing has black smoke so wait what is this it is a stick everybody knew that who was watching but <laughs> the ancient person did not know that and now we have a stick, and you know your mind can begin to go in places about like, well, what would what would suddenly having a stick be? If you're some so you're an ancient creature that didn't have tools, what could you do with that? And you'll encounter things in the game that you know you'll have thoughts. Ah, oh, okay, that that might have huh. been helpful to have that. I've already seen. I already know what some of those things are. And that's cool, right? It's cool to have that epiphany and want to go. So there's a little bit of Metroid to it, right? Where For it's sure. like. You know, in Metroid, you kind of walk around. You don't really know what it is that you're doing sometimes, or you don't really think through the fact that, okay, there was a funny-looking part of the floor over there, and then you pick up the bomb, you get the bombs, and then you suddenly realize, wait a minute. Yeah. All the funny-looking parts of the floor I've been going by are bombable floors. Yeah. And that changes how you think about the space that you've been in and the game level and everything. So here, I'm just trying to discover enough things that we might get some... some uh, brain development here fishing spot um gee what would you do with this fishing spot now paul you got any thoughts there <laughs> i don't know if there were maybe something to uh use <laughs> yeah. curious how long it'll take you to unlock the uh the double jump people ask when when i wrote about this game if you can advance to like a species that didn't exist or whatever and I don't have any sense that this game goes into like sci-fi like have like impossible game of gaming abilities or anything let's see if this is going to let me no none of these, none of these neurons is uh, available to me to progress yet let's can you only access that when you're laying down yeah okay so now I'm just trying to smell a lot Oh, is that something else new? So this is a little bit of a more... I feel like maybe you will. So it might just be the food, yeah. So people who heard us at the beginning say that this game doesn't really tell you much might be wondering, guys, what are you talking about? There's like a pop-up tutorial every <laughs> second. But trust me, like, there's yeah. a lot in here that is mystifying and I've already actually conveyed a fair amount, but you may not have leaned uh, in the first playthrough. It's it's interesting, though, because, like, when you actually make those connections in your brain, like, in real life, there is that, you know, that sense, like you said a second ago, like with Metroid, where you feel like, oh, wow, those epiphanies feel so good, especially after you struggle with the game for so long. I mean, this is, like, my first playthrough, obviously you've been playing this for much longer than I have, so this first playthrough is not representative of what someone who might go into this blind would be like, but... Um, yeah, it, it, there's something cool about the idea that the game sort of fights you. But also, I could see how that would turn some people away, for sure. Yeah, well, there's a lot to this that is very much 
you know, survival game. So, okay, yeah. th- finally, I got okay, I got the senses neuron to mature, which is what I was hoping to have happen. So I've just been kind of spamming the senses buttons to do that. So now I think what will happen if I go back over here. Oh, you know what I should have been doing is if I was carrying uh, a second baby, oh. I would have even more neuronal uh, point development. So wow. shame on me for not carrying the two at once. So they're just little XP multipliers. He's a father of twins. <laughs> how, <laughs> how could you, Steve? Yeah, seriously. So, okay, wow. boom, there we go. So it said I matured a neuron, so let's go spend some XP in there. And let's. what do we get? Okay, so now I have the range for detecting odors and sounds is increased, so I'm going to be able to smell and hear things further away. Um, I'll just give it away that some of the upgrades eventually are things where it's like if you smell one thing and there's a couple things that are the same nearby, it auto smells like all of them. When you smell one thing, it like detects them all. So you guys have been seeing me do a lot of scanning and it, it, it might look tedious. It is actually tedious, but I actually am surprised by it because where I'm at in the game now, I scan much more quickly because the scanning time is accelerated because that's itself an upgrade. Like it's basically your oh. ability to understand what you're smelling Im- improves, which is I guess another way of showing like neurological advancement. But then also your ability to kind of see, smell a bunch of things at once, see a bunch of things at once, that also comes into play. Um, so there, so you really do feel like, like okay, this might be what it would feel like to have an evolving brain to be thinking in ways that you know the species couldn't have thought however long ago so i hope i'm holding down the button i love the dreams Paul. i love those yeah, the dreams yeah, yeah stuff is good and they're always reflect things you've seen out in the real world well in in this case the jungle that you're exploring so sometimes it'll be like a boar or it'll be a snake or whatever yeah i i, I thought that too i wasn't 100 percent sure but so it's it's reaffirming to hear you get the same sense of that i mean it's telling us that we did pretty well i think on food water and yeah. sleep for the night so I can g- I can do a thing here. Paul, this is going to be a bit of a spoiler for you, I think, if you haven't done this. Did you it's scan cool. this, this diamond up here yet? No. Do it. Wait, I think I've done this. People may recall I said that Patrice Desolé, the lead creator of this, is also the lead creator of Assassin's Creed. And, you know, we all know what happens when you get to a lookout point. Mm. You press hold down a button. So you have to synchronize. Very, yeah, synchronize. There's no, like, you know, filling out, you know, nodes on a map because of this or anything like that. And, in fact, there is no map in this game. Mm. So you really got to understand where you are. But we have not just... Oh. We've not just discovered, you know, fully our region here by doing this. But a narrative moment has happened. This does not happen every time you synchronize a location. But Paul, did, did you see no, this? No, I didn't see this Okay, yet. so you probably didn't do this particular spot. There are many spots on the map, and you, maybe you did a different one, where you, you scan the diamond, yeah. and it then names the area. This is different. When you do it in your base camp, you have this happen. Something's gone through the sky, and should we go find out what that is? Absolutely. Okay. 100%. What could go wrong? By the way, that's oh. where... Uh, Oh, rest in, rest peace. in peace, right? Yeah. You don't hear the bird, right? So we're good? Yeah, yeah. Steal the egg, steal the egg. Analyze. Oh, yeah, yeah. Steal the egg? Like eye for an eye here? Yeah, yeah. Get us, grab a snack. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a road trip. Oh, you're gonna do it right there? You're playing with fire. <laughs> okay. Eagle egg. Uh, yeah, yeah, just I don't know if it. I can... Yeah. Oh, okay. I was gonna say I don't know if I could swing while holding an e- holding an egg, but thankfully I can. I oh, think I'm yeah. gonna eat my egg right now. Yeah, go for it. Eat some raw egg. Uh oh. I've not fi- figured out what this particular I have no condition idea. is. I I don't know if this is a good thing has happened or a bad thing. It's has gotta happened. be a I, bad thing because I I did that with a mushroom that I didn't know what, what it was, and then I was like freaking out in my stomach. Mushrooms. Was, okay. Yeah, I was. Oh ooh. no. Oh, leg break oh, too. Oh no. That was rough. Okay, so we're, we're good though. Because we've got some horsetail, and we already know what horsetail does. That's right. I just always slept it, slept it off. Like right. So life. early on, when I was first playing the game, I restarted the game four times, and it was oh so frustrating God. early on. What? I didn't know you could do this. <laughs> yeah, you got to experiment. Again, that I'm giving away energy. all the secrets. <laughs> so anything that can buff you also can like just remove the debuffs. And so... Huh. So I don't know. I'm drinking the, the the stomach thing away, but the stomach thing was green, not red in there. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know if I'm like helping myself learn to eat a challenging food, or or what? Like helping your immune system? Yeah, I don't know. 
Um, notice, by the way, bottom right, we now it's now showing, or in case you couldn't tell, that we're carrying two kids because we have the two orange dots that have circles. <laughs> and they're totally lines. fine. Don't worry. Oh, you, yeah, they're good. You, you absorb that fall. Okay, so I think it's in... I think it's in this direction, right? The smoke? Can you... S oh, yeah, yeah. You I guess you just have to look for the visual cue. I don't remember if you can smell it or not. If you could smell what that rock was cooking. Wow. Yeah, no, I, th I threw that out for I you. I know you like... You know I like wrestling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come on, give me that. How to make me not like wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. Trying to speak yeah, my yeah. language. So I feel like, again... Um, I'm surprised as I'm going through this now. I feel like I'm a little slow and like I'm moving slowly. And it must be because as I've played and progressed and evolved and upgraded and all that, that I've gained faster um, motor skills and faster walking speeds and running speeds. Or really, I mean, in this case, it's knuckle walking, right? Um, yeah. And the, the ability to try to walk upright begins to come into play. It might be, now that I think of it, because you're forced to walk upright in the water, right? Yeah. If the water's holding you up. Mm -hmm. I wonder if that's the thing that eventually sort of teases out that neuron oh. of walking upright. In fact, I wonder if that's how it really happened. Oh, watch oh, it. Whoa, whoa. Y'all, everybody see oh, that? Oh, God. Do not mess with that thing. Oh, God, it's moving towards you. Steven, run. <laughs> do not, I do not mess with that thing. Okay. So we're about to do a whole thing. So bottom left meter we said was fear, right? So remember when we were babies, everybody? So fear of the unknown. So what do you do to alleviate the fear? We first of all want to hope that the dopamine meter does not go down all the way. It's going down quickly. So oh, yeah. how do you get over fear? You stay calm and you look at things and you thi you're thinking, you're observing. You're saying, oh, there's a boar down there. Boar we don't want him there. to attack. We don't want any smoke. Okay, so these are things we don't know, so that's not helpful. Keep your head on a swivel. Hiding spot. So what are we doing in the process of this? You may notice that there's a, okay. Uh, there's odors, let's smell. Okay, horse tail. Oh God. Okay, smelling, our smelling skills are getting better. Okay, so we don't know what that is either. So part of the problem here is that we don't know what, there's too many things that we don't know what they are. But I don't know if you notice this, Paul. It's, it took me a long time to understand this system. But as I'm detecting stuff, the oh, see what's f that that thing is filling up. There's even some lines that are kind of subtly drawing attention to that. I hope I hope I'm not going to catch the attention of the. Yeah, we're going to see what this is. I think this water is bad, so actually don't. Let's inspect it. So I'm filling up that white circle on the left. This is a system that took me a long time to understand. So, uh, you know, you're welcome to any of the people. That's yeah. Really See, I've done this. I'm low on dopamine. Oh, there you go. Oh, and now oh I have God. to dodge. Oh, but I almost, I've almost filled up the... The circle. I almost filled up the circle. Oh, and let's pick up. Here's the, here's the thing that fell out of the sky. Oh. Let's try to pick this up. I have a broken leg from the boar attack. And you, now you know what a boar is. But I've picked up the, I've discovered the swamp meteorite. Let me drop the horsetail. Actually, I should eat the horsetail, right? 100%. So pick that up, eat it. We're still afraid. Where we are, we're still afraid. But this is going to help the broken leg problem go down. Let's pick up the meteorite. Let's inspect the meteorite. Notice the white circle, by the way, on the left now says surrounding rationalized. Surroundings rationalized, reach conquer zone. So that's telling us that we have, we've learned enough about our surrounding spaces. We can reach the conquer zone. We've found the meteorite. Oh, oh no, oh. here comes the tiger. I'm trying to stay calm. We're also being, oh, our eyes are being drawn. Oh yeah, we're bleeding and we have a broken leg. That's and the good. tiger is coming after us. You gotta climb, you gotta go up. Yeah, I'm trying. But we're also being encouraged to go rationalize. So I'm, I'm treating this Oh my goodness, where is that white dot? Where's that white circle? Oh, it's over here? Oh yeah. Conquer your fear. No, so the tiger got distracted by the hog, the warthog, which is good. Hopefully he's busy, he's busy chewing on him. But we're in the conquer your fear spot right now. Oh, hold down the conquer your fear. Oh. Okay, this is a little bit video gamey here that like one system is overriding the other one. So we are a bleeding, broken legged mess. But we've now conquered this area, so no more of the scary, howling things happening around us. Notice that the color scheme of this area is different. 
we in fact can now probably discover this spot here. Mm, the swamp. Which further, uh, this, so these are these aforementioned evolutionary feats. Um, so that's good that we've discovered this area, but uh, Mrs. Ape here is a wreck. So we've got to stop the bleeding. Yeah, I've done this section actually. Okay. I conquered. I mean, this swamp my fear. stressed me out for oh hours. God. So I'm making it look a little bit easy now. Although I guess I didn't no, make yeah. it look fully easy because it, it was still kind of challenging it here. It took me much longer than that. I just want to get, reorient myself. So that's where base camp is. So we're going to go back to base camp. Paul, I'm going to have to give away how to deal with the bleeding. That's fine. We, I mean, we kind of hinted at it at the top of the at the top of the video. So, yeah. Also, let's see what this is. Let's learn what this is. Oh, this is just stones. I don't really care, but I can't resist. Uh, mentioned way back that this is on, launching on the Epic Game Store, um, coming to console later. They recommend you play it with controller no matter what. So even though it's PC first, um, for better or worse, uh, the design is really oriented toward controller, even for those of you who might be more mouse keyboard people. Um, the broken limb is, uh, problem is about to go away. As you see that, it's about to... Um, be emptied, but the bleeding. I gotta find a spot to deal with the bleeding. But my character movement speed should increase, I think, as soon as the broken leg goes away. I actually really like the fact that it uh, changes the environment around you and kind of literally will fog things up when you're scared. It gives me some of those. Um, Oh, this is the good timing, by the way. I'm going to pat myself yeah. on the back for a second. A rainstorm <laughs> just started, which would make you cold, but I'm eating some of this plant. Oh, nice. And I'm getting the, the cold debuff. Well done. And I also can hear the boars are nearby, so they're probably going to come after me. You were saying? What, what did you say? No, you no, I, ju I just like that there are, like, visual cues that represent... Like, this game does a really good job of visually communicating either what obstacles are happening internally, like, inside of your brain, or, like, what kind of progress you make, even if it's on, like, the, you know the ne neuronal <laughs> level. You got the word. Yeah. Good. <laughs> you want to say neural, right? Yeah, I do want to say neural. Or neurological. Maybe I'm probably even saying that wrong. Someone's going to comment and let me know. I'm sure in a very, very nice way. We have, oh, yeah. We have good viewers. There you go. Hey, let's go see what that stuff is. Well, I mean, everybody saw it before. We had the no bleeding debuff before, so we've established enough that if there's, if a thing gives you a, or no ble bleeding buff, rather, that if it gives you a buff, it's probably going to help you in other ways, too. So is that an animal down? No, yeah, it's a down. boar. Okay. I don't know. I'm not always good at jumping from a trunk. Same. I've blown this so many. See, yeah, I, <laughs> I do the same thing. I climb yeah. very slowly. Okay. So this is this is a key, key thing. I was just chatting with somebody today who also had an advanced copy of the game, and they were like, I don't know what to do, and I'm bleeding. And it was clearly like wrecking them in terms of how they, how they were doing in their game. This and was the first thing I learned. Yeah, it's great. It took me a, it took me a long time. So I, so I would have... Whoa, risky jump. Well, I have the no bro bone breaking oh, yeah, uh, I guess protections so. on. But it looks like I'm also dealing with some level of fear. There might have just been a animal nearby. Yeah, I was trying to see if this would trigger the walking um, neurons. I wonder uh, if, if I wonder if you stand if yeah, you if you stand stand still and then stand if that helps move that needle forward. I don't think I can stand yet. That's what I'm saying. I don't know oh. that I've been given that. Eventually, what Paul's getting to, Paul's just spoiling, <laughs> is that eventually you do get a button prompts to stand. Yeah. And then for very short periods of time, you can walk on two feet. And what I'm realizing now in only like my fifth or sixth time restarting the game is that, oh, yeah, I didn't have that at the beginning. And something has given me that ability. Mm. I'm, this tree is, climb is exhausting me. I wonder if you get tired faster when you're carrying the babies. Oh, that's interesting. I wonder if there's a trade-off there. And there's uh, some Breath of the Wild to this whole stamina thing, too, for sure. Oh, God. Paul, have you figured out how to deal with the, 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 the brambles here? I have not. This is one, I mean, I'm like, oh, I'm showing everything. I'm like, oh, I figured this out, I figured this out. These thorny things, I have no they idea suck. what you're supposed to do with them. They're the worst. So it's 7.18 as the clock is ticking. We're back to base camp. 
We've got the babies. We've stopped bleeding. We've discovered the swamp. We've picked up the meteorite. And look at the meter on the bottom right. We are full of neuronal, whatever it's called, <laughs> energy. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Look at this thing. This thing is full. Whoa. We've got nodes it's ready. time to learn, baby. Yeah. I've never been more excited to learn. <laughs> So we've got a bunch of things. So we're going to do a couple of things, upgrades, and then we're going to do some generational jumps. We're going to evolve, and then I think we'll probably call it a, yeah. call it a video. So let's do this. So the uh, we're spending points, and now, next time we're attacked by a boar, we have a, a better way to dodge it. I feel like I already had that ability, though, huh? So wait. Yeah. Maybe you get better at it. Oh, you can counterattack. Reactions for escapes and counterattacks are faster. Okay, yeah. Huh, oh, whatever whatever huh. would you counterattack an animal with? <laughs> huh, if only there was some kind of tool. Right? Is this, this giving you all kinds of ideas now, right, Paul? Yeah, yeah. So, I've look, the ability to detect more distant elements. So you're seeing the evolution of the senses as well. And that's coming off the um, the motor skill thing. So is that about, I don't know what orthost orthostatus is, um, but ortho means bones. So uh -huh. we can look that up. But I wonder if it involves... Um, some sort of just, be, I don't know. I'm going to say the wrong thing, but I wonder if it's involving like how you can turn your head or something like that. But notice, by the way, it says that if you perform this action, you get neuronal energy. So it's also hinting to you, these are the kinds of actions they want you to repeatedly do. And so part of the question on this game and why I can only talk about it from a previewer sense of like, I'm very, I'm really enjoying what I'm doing, um, but I still have lots of questions about it, is that I don't know if the game is gonna to continue to let me master things and then learn new things at a clip such that I don't find it tedious where I'm having to repetitiously scan in a slow way or move in a slow way or right. get mauled by the same animals. It's not fun to have to fight the tigers and the boars so far. Like, I've gotten better, I can now kill them. But every time one shows up, I'm like, oh, this is a drag. There's gonna be a whole extended sequence as I get the right ability to fight, you know, the right tools to fight the boar. And I'm kind of hoping something could speed it up. And I'm wondering if eventually, I'm gonna be like, oh, I'm gonna be able to kill it in fewer hits or bring my clan with me and we kill it together yeah. or maybe we can sneak up on it. And I'm wondering if it'll be teaching me these things. I've spent all, all that I can on the uh, neurons here. And you can see again, all kinds of darkened nodes that if I were to do more of particular things, more analysis, I would get more of that. There's a whole section over here that hasn't really developed much at all, which is with communication. If I was hanging out with the, my fellow primates more, uh, I can do more with that. So you can pick kind of which branch to the skill tree. The skill tree, again, goes out pretty far. Four reinforcements. So you get a number of reinforcements. These are going to be the genes that you take with you to the next generation or the abilities. So because I have four, I'm going to lock in four things. If I only had three, then I wouldn't lock in one. So I'd have to choose which upgrades do I want to take with me when I advance to the next generation. But I'm good with this. By the way, notice I only have two kids. So what's going to happen here is... The how many elders should we have? Do you remember? Was it two or three? They're gonna die. Damn, um, rip. The adults, I think we had three or four, are gonna become elders, and the two babies are gonna become adults. We could have spent some time trying to um, partner up, mate. And that's a whole thing. They don't tell you how to do that, so that you're learning too. Um, have you formed any couples in the game? No, no. So that's a whole a whole question of how that works. And then once you're doing that, though, like if we had four kids instead of two we'd have four adults going through this also the number of kids you have affects the amount of reinforcements you can do so the more kids the more things you can lock to the next generation wow yeah what a fascinating game so a baby has been born with a spontaneous genetic mutation so we're actually going to skip this generation i think by the way notice so uh pop quiz paul how many adults how many elders do we have look on the bottom we right. have and how many babies three elders and two babies now two to adults. Oh dang it! And nobody's. Oh, I know why. Because I kind of miss. I gave a. I gave the wrong impression before. The orange didn't indicate that they were babies. The orange indicated that they carried a potential genetic mutation. Oh. So, what happened was when they became adults, I think they, the, the potential genetic mutation. I may be getting this a little bit wrong, but I believe yes, the potential genetic mutations that the babies had now are activated in the adults. So it's telling huh. you that baby awe now that they're an adult has um, can remember the positions of more than one thing. So that thing where I was doing where I was like tagging a thing and then it was staying on my UI. So now I can do that for two things, thanks to awe having randomly, this is randomly happening in the game, this mutation. So think a little bit about roguelikes 
and gaining gaining sort of skills with a, uh, with a good role of a character. And this baby uh -huh. here, Took, has um, can better metabolize nutrients, so probably can handle eating stuff. So maybe if they ate an egg, they wouldn't have the same upset stomach or something like oh, that. Interesting. Oh, interesting. So um, if we wanted to pass a generation, we would have to have kids. So they don't want to. They won't let us do that. I think though that we can evolve because I think you can evolve at any time. So Paul, are you ready to evolve? Let's do it. I'm okay. so ready. See, so note how the, the years, the timeline, all this stuff, we're ready to evolve. Let's move ahead. You, this has really sold me on the game. <laughs> huh. So we are, um, these are the different things that we were doing in this playthrough that are now being counted in ways that saying, oh, you're ahead of time. So obviously it's very video gamey. Like, do they really right. know when, you know, primitive, primitive humankind ate berries, scared snakes? Was that really a thing? crucial to evolving the species maybe it was maybe it wasn't but they're doing sort of a how, how far science would think that you where you're at versus you know where you're at um in terms of what the game's expectation is you get years added so a points advantage a year's advantage for things that you've done you get penalized for deaths i played it pretty cleanly so i didn't have any deaths i don't think um there was the elder who died in the cutscene. i don't know if that's counted against me but if but in most of the times i've been playing like my like tiger comes in and mauls my clan and i lose a bunch of guys that counts again so hey i'm ahead of time i felt good about this the first time i evolved and then then i got hit okay so wait that one death was counted against us um and then the births count for us we were given the deaths and the births though so we didn't do any of that one way or the other and so the differential has been canceled out i guess this is actually showing that two births oh wow. is the same as one death um, which I guess that's some sort of philosophical wow, thing think to about that, that. Right? Chew on that one. <laughs> so we evolve um, on par with science, and we're now we're 9,750,000 years ago. We go back to the game. I don't know if we're technically a new species yet in current terms. Like, they don't establish in the beginning, you're homo, whatever. Um, there is a moment in the game where it did say, it gave me a Latin name, and it said, you're now homo, whatever this was. not I think it was homo something. And I didn't recognize it as, uh, like, it wasn't one of the more famous ones or whatever. Mm. So, um, like, it wasn't homo erectus, uh, not homo sapien. But I think that stuff is, you know, is what we are now. later, yeah. But it's, it's much later. So this is much more back in the day. Also, I mean, I haven't looked closely enough to see if the, 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 the species looks different as you evolve. But we are further in the timeline. I think they just retained the familiar grouping that you had. So they're like, well, you had two babies, three adults, three, okay. two adults, three elders. So you're there. We will, um, I just want to show this to people. The ability to switch control. So again, remember you're playing as a group. Uh, but that's it. This is Ancestors, Humankind Odyssey. Paul, anything else you think we need to tell the people about um, before we? I, I guess one <laughs> bit of advice is, uh, just stick with it, because like for a long time. Oh, oh, whoa! You're too strong now. <laughs> uh, for a long time, the game really does kind of fight you up top. But I think if like if you just give it some time, be patient with it. This game is. I mean, for me right now, even just watching you play it, it's it's really interesting how it. Oh. <laughs> even you see what I mean. This is a perfect metaphor. Just just grab another branch. Keep keep going. Uh, because yeah, this is. I mean, the movement stuff is pretty clunky for me uh, personally. I think it could definitely use some uh, some love. Uh, as time goes on, even in the game's own I get, evolution, I became more dexterous. By the way. there you go, <laughs> there you go. You got you got to hit the gym. But um, no, yeah, I'm, I'm actually super fascinated by this game now. I mean, way more than I was before, having just played it on my own. But uh, yeah, I, I can't wait to put more time into this now. Yeah. So, ancestors, human kind of odyssey. Uh, if people are curious, hopefully this video was helpful. Cool. But we uh, we just gave you a you know. A little, extra. a little bit of a look and a little, a little bonus back rub <laughs> moment at the end. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. All right, peace. Yeah.